Today, I'd like to do an experiment to show the relationship between uh, heat output, burn chamber temperature, uh, housing temperature, and carbon monoxide at various uh, fueling levels. So like, I'm gonna start at my lowest fueling level of 1.6 and then do 2.6, 3.6, 4.6 and then 5.5, because mine finishes at 5.5. And we'll record all the data, and then I'll make a graph, and then we can sort of show the workings of air-fuel ratios, you know, what pump settings and fan settings get you, what temperatures and how much carbon monoxide you get from said things. So, a quick view at the setup. First off, over here will be the uh, carbon monoxide. As you can see, it's showing a reading because I was running the heater to make sure it still ran after we overheat it in the last video. Then, just purely for curiosity, we have an O2, sen O2 sensor on a gauge. And that's, like I say, it's just purely for my own curiosity to see if we can get that to move. And for measuring the Outlet air temperature, we've got a thermocouple just uh, taped onto the case. And for the burn chamber temperature, I have purchased this very long thermocouple that goes all the way, well, I drilled and tapped the housing to receive the holder for the thermocouple and that goes all the way inside the heater into the inside middle of the burn chamber. That'll get tightened up and that'll give us a burn chamber temperature the afterburner, it's got a dis the display of the housing temperature and it's relatively accurate because in the last video where we overheat, the temperatures were pretty much matching right up till it got to the overheat temperature. Uh, hopefully we won't be anywhere near that today. So, like I said, I'm going to put that uh, probe back in there, tighten it up, get it all ready. I've got my whiteboard over there. I'll let it run up, come back, back down to 1.6, I'll show you me taking the readings for the 1.6 and then I'll do all the other readings, you won't have to sit through them all, and then at the end we'll look at the graphs, talk about what each thing represents and means, and then right at the very end I think we will absolutely fuck up the fueling settings and see what madness we can get it to do. Let's do it. Just if anyone is curious, so that's the fueling just started and watch the burn chamber temperature rise. It gets hot fast in there. Yes, that's, uh, that's pretty fast. Okay, we have a burn chamber temperature of 800, and, well, it's anywhere between 890 and 899. Air output, 47 degrees. Well, anywhere between 47, four, sorry, 45 and 48, so 47 is where it's been hovering. Carbon monoxide, you can't see, there we go. It goes into like uh, 15 and 30, like it's usually hovering around 25 though. And we have, can you see on there? Uh, if I zoom in. We have a housing temperature of 130. 30 degrees, 1.6 hertz, and like 1900 RPM. So I should write all this down on the whiteboard. 1.6 hertz, 1900 RPM, uh, housing temperature of 130 degrees, air output of 47 degrees, uh, burn chamber temperature of 800, and, we'll call it 890, 890 degrees, and a carbon monoxide reading of 25 parts per million. Right, so what I'll do now is go and run 2.6, 3.6, 4.6, 5.5 to finish it, and I'll write down all those numbers and bring you back. Okay, let's have a little look at this graph and see if we can make some sense of it. Uh, the uh, green line, you can see, is the actual burner, inst the inside burner uh, temperature. 
And you can see it's got a, well, a fairly narrow window between like, what, 900 to 1200 degrees. So it basically tries to keep, you know, a good, the same, well not good, the same temperature throughout the entire uh, fan, RPM and pump hairs. So looking at the graph, you're kind of looking at like 900 and well, you know, 850 is maybe the bottom end. Do you ever want to take the temperature? Below that it gets too low. I have noticed that on starting, you know, you get that whomping noise that it only does it when the burn, cha burn chamber temperature is like below 800 and then it may be a combination of the fan speed picking up as well as the fuel speed picking up but when it gets to that you know 800 900 degrees the noise goes away and it starts to run normally so you can see that that's the green line is the burn chamber temperature what other uh, the housing temperature is a pretty steady uh, line as well it always well I suppose if you have a fairly constant burner temperature you would have a fairly constant housing temperature anywhere between well 130 and 210 degrees is the red line uh, i want to say the the carbon monoxide which is the orange one uh, uh they see where it gets a bit um long, well at the end where it's uh, going really high i think the cheap carbon monoxide uh tester that we're using doesn't like getting hot and it's readings start to get really inaccurate as it gets hotter because I ran the same test again with, you know, a four and a half thousand RPM fan and 5.5 hertz and I got a completely different carbon monoxide reading. I got, well, I got 40 parts per million instead of 400 parts per million. So those are outliers and we're going to take them as erroneous data. Uh, the bottom uh, line there, which is, uh, it's basically a straight line because of the, because of the graph and the numbers on it but that's the air output temperature. Now, bearing in mind that I had the door open and the fan on, so it was always getting a constant input of eight degrees. And so the output remained a constant, well, almost a constant between 47 and 58 degrees. Obviously, if you're in an enclosed space, your air temperature will get hotter and hotter and hotter. So output air will get hotter as the input air gets hotter. But in my situation for testing, the input temperature and the output temperature with well remained constant. Why does the output temperature remain constant? Because the more fuel and air you throw at it, the hotter the burn chamber gets, the hotter the housing gets, but the fan's moving more air, so it's transferring more heat into more air, which is how it heats up and how it works. So you're getting, obviously, the more fuel you put in it, the more heat it makes, the hotter it can make the air faster. But obviously that results in the output temperature being roughly the same. Uh, what's the, what is the blue line? Blue line is the pump that we can barely see because, well, on this graph we're going from 1.6 to 5.5 and we have a scale of 0 to 1250 because that was the burn chamber temperature. I haven't put the fan speed in this graph because it would basically just be a diagonal line going from, you know, 2000 RPM to... 4,500 RPM, so it would just be a diagonal line right up the middle of the graph, but it would then, it would throw the scale even further and all these lines down the bottom would get even more straight line looking. I've just given the heater an impossible target, hopefully, of 10 hertz in the fuel pump and 4,500 RPM. So, uh, yeah, let's see what happens. So first thing is, the air fuel gauge is uh, showing 11.5. So that's rich. Hey, what have we got? We're at... Target's 10, 8 point, 8 point 8, 9, 9.1. Okay, that's 10 hertz in the fuel pump. Can you see the black smoke? Black smoke! Burn chamber temperature is now falling because there is so much fuel, it can't burn it. We're at 11 now. Now, let me see if I can fix this before it uh, ruins all of them. I hope that it'll now uh, burn itself back out. Let's watch the gauge. 
Can you see? Black smoke has stopped. Burn chamber temperatures now really cool down because the fan's gone insane. Here we go, it's lagging. Marvellous. Nice black skid mark here, so God knows what the inside of the heater is going to look like. I've got the heater running at 0 0.8 hertz on the fuel pump and 1500 RPM. And you'll maybe be sitting there thinking, oh, that'll be nice and economical. That's ah, still making warm air and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, I need to move this slowly because it's giving me air strange readings. So it's at zero over here ish. And I'll just put it in front of the thing. I'll let it work up its reading and I'll press hold. Right, so it's already gone higher than the thing can read. That's OL, that is overload, it cannot read. There is so much carbon monoxide coming out of that, the meter can't even, well, I say, and then it'll fall back down slowly over here. So that is horrendous. Well, if you've made it this far and you're wondering, well, what does all this mean, David? Well, uh, I don't know. Well, I, we know what it means. We need, you need to get your air fuel ratio right so you have the correct burner temperature to make as least amount of carbon monoxide you can for the amount of heat that you want to output. So you can, like I said, you can dial the fuel pump right back and have no carbon monoxide, but in the same hand, that also means you get less heat output from here. So I would still definitely invest, well, invest your 20 pounds in one of these, but bearing in mind that they don't appear to like being hot for too long, so if you're you know, when you're tuning your heater, just take a reading and then move it back out of the way again and adjust your settings and then put it back in the exhaust flow and take another reading and move it away and so on and so forth. Also bear in mind that if you're getting a high carbon monoxide reading, you might actually have to turn the fuel up, not just down, because you might find that you've not got enough fuel to make it hot enough inside for it to atomize and burn properly. So you'll have to, well, just experiment basically. Just take a reading, see what it is. If you go down one hertz on the fuel pump and it gets worse, then, uh, or and it gets worse, or your heater goes out, then you need to go up the way. So try going, you know, one hertz over what you had for your previous setting and see if that makes the carbon monoxide come down and the heat go up. But like I say, it's a bit of experimenting and they're all different. Well, not all, well. They are, all your setups are different, No, like unless you're actually building vans making everyone the exact same thing, there's still the possibility that your heaters aren't going to be exactly the same and your fuel pump's not giving out exactly the same quantity, fan speeds aren't going to be exactly the same. So, best in one of these, do a bit of tuning and hopefully your heater lasts well, a lot longer with you not having to take it apart as much and clean out the burn chamber and the atomizing mesh and the glow plug if you get you know, a lot of carbon, although you've seen we need a lot of fuel to make proper, proper black smoke. Anyway, uh, any questions, any comments, anything like that, just down below, leave a message and I'll try my best to answer them. But that's about it and thanks for watching.